Fellas, considering we've just had two back-to-back -back middleweight main events, we've obviously Drakus Duplessis taking on Israel Adesanya and Canon A just taking on Kyle Bralo. I thought I'd go through the middleweight division and match make some of the fighters in the division in fights that, first of all, I think will be really fun to see as a fan and just fights that we want to see. And then fights that make sense um, that we just need to see overall. And there's only four middleweights right now in the rankings that actually have fights booked and they're all against each other as well. So there's only two fights right now in the middleweight ranking. So there's a lot of fighters that don't have fights. So I'm going to be match making the middleweight division into fights that, like I said, I think will be fun to see as a fan and that I just think everyone would want to see. So um, we'll start off with a title picture. So um, for Drikas Duplessis, obviously just came off that really good performance over Israel Adesanya. I think the title fight that Drikas Duplessis should have next is against Sean Strickland. There's numerous reasons why I think Strickland should be next. And I think the majority of MMA fans agree that Strickland should be next. I mean, first of all, if you look at all of Drikas Duplessis' fights, Strickland has definitely come closest to beating him. I mean, it's not like Drikas finished him like he did with Whitaker and Adesanya. Strickland took him to a very, very close distance. Season. A lot of MMA fans thought that Strickland should have won that fight. So I think it's only fair if we give Strickland the opportunity. And it was one of the best middleweight title fights we've had in a while. Especially when Adesanya was champion, middleweight title fights didn't have the best reputation. But Drikas Duplessis versus Strickland, if you take away the dodgy decision at the end, it wasn't even that dodgy, but if you take away the controversy over the decision, it was a really good back and forth fight between them. And if that's what we can expect every single time we see Drikas versus Strickland, sign me up. Next reason as well, you know, they've got a big build up. The build up to the first fight was amazing. They seem to be talking to each other on Twitter a lot. So it looks like the build up to that fight is going to be really interesting as well. So overall, Drikas Duplessis versus Sean Strickland should be the next time title fight in my opinion in the middleweight division and on top of that if you look at the middleweight division right now there's no one else for Drikas but Strickland Adesanya's just lost Wittig's going to be facing Chimaev Imovov is going to be facing Allen so Strickland is literally the only name at the top that he's there for Drikas Duplessis so Sean Strickland get his let him get his title shot again against Drikas Duplessis I think it should be a really fun build up and it should be a really fun fight based on the first time we saw it and we're going to be seeing Sean Strickland get the opportunity to fight for a belt again so Sean Strickland Drikas Duplessis let's run it back um, I've heard some rumors that it's going to be in South South Africa. If that's the case, that's going to be massive for the UFC, and I'm expecting it to be early 2025, maybe UFC 311 or something like that. But Drickus, Strigland, I think that should be the next title fight in the middleweight division. And uh, obviously, Whitaker and Chimaev, they're going to be taking each other on at UFC 308, so I can't put them in different fights. But I still think there's a big fight for both of them out there. And I think the winner of Robert Whitaker and Hamzat Chimaev should face the winner of Sean Strickland and Drickus Duplessis. In other words, I think they should just get a title shot. Robert Whitaker, if he can beat Hamzat Chimaev, he's going to be on a three fight winning streak against, well, he would have beaten undefeated Hamzat Chimaev. He would have beaten Ikram Aliskrov, and he would have beaten Paolo Costa. Three solid wins since he's lost to Drickus Duplessis. Um, and if he can beat Chimaev, like I said, that's the cherry on top. Give him his title shot he's always been one of the best middleweights for Chimaev, if he can beat Robert Whittaker, he's beaten one of the greatest middleweights of all time, one of the greatest welterweights of all time in Usman, and also Kevin Holland in his last three, and he's undefeated as well, and he's a big star up and coming, so I think if Chimaev can get the win over Robert Whittaker, I think we have to give Chimaev his title shot, so the winner of Whittaker, Chimaev, against the winner of Strickland and Dricker, so if it's Whittaker versus Strickland, it's one of the only fights in the higher end of the middleweight division that we haven't actually seen yet, and I think there's lots of questions to be asked about this fight, and I think it should be a really fun fight to see between Strickland and and, and Whitaker, especially from like a technical standpoint as well. I think that'd be a really interesting title fight. Or we're going to be seeing Whitaker run it back against Drickers Duplessis. Obviously, we saw them fight at UFC 290. Drickers got the, the massive upset finish. And if Whitaker can put together a three fight winning streak and Drickers can beat Strickland, let's see him be in another rematch against Robert Whitaker. I don't mind that. And if Chimaev wins, Chimaev versus Strickland might be one of the funnest, like the funniest build ups to a title fight ever. You've got Sean Strickland and Chimaev completely contrasting personalities. And to be honest, completely contrasting fight styles as well. I think that'll be a fun fight as well. And Chimaev versus Drikas Duplessis, I think is the toughest fight in the division for Hamzat Chimaev. But it's also quite interesting considering if he is undefeated and he can go past Robert Whittaker, there's no, you know, there's no denying that he is next in line for a title shot. So the winner of Robert Whittaker and Hamzat Chimaev, I think that's going to be a great fight. But ultimately, I think the winner should face the winner of Strickland and Drikas Duplessis. Um, so yeah, I think these four guys should be faced each other next in the title picture of the UFC middleweight division. In terms of Israel Adesanya, now here's the thing about Adesanya. I understand he's one of the greatest middleweights of all time, and it's going to be kind of weird seeing Adesanya not fighting for a belt, but I think as of right now, fighting for a belt is a no-go. He just got finished by Drickus Duplessis. Before that, he got dominated by Sean Strickland, one of the biggest upsets of 2023 in the fact that he should have won. Before that, he got a highlight reel knockout of Alex Pereira. And then before that, he got finished by Alex Pereira as well. So he's lost three out of his last four. 
I um, mean, he seems to be on the declining end of his UFC career, as Adesanya. So I think the title pitcher right now, let's, let's not throw him in the deep end. I think if he wants to get back in the title pitcher, he has to earn it. Um, so let's give him a, you know, let's get him out of the deep end. Let's give him some up and comers. I think Israel Adesanya should face the winner of Brendan Allen and Nasadi Imamov. Now, obviously, Imamov and Allen are going to be facing each other in the co main event of UFC Paris, um, which is a really good fight between two surging middleweight contenders. And I think the winner of that fight should get a big, massive opportunity against Israel Adesanya. I mean, if it's Adesanya versus Brendan Allen, I think that's a really interesting fight, especially if Allen can get past Imovov, because Allen would be another big grappling threat to Adesanya. With Justin Adesanya get submitted by Drickus, we're going to be seeing how he does against another heavy grappler in Brendan Allen, um, if Brendan Allen can work his way up. So I think that's another good fight for Adesanya, another, you know, a guy to, to test his skills on and maybe warm up back to before he gets to, you know, the top of the division. And then if it's Imovov, again, another tricky fighter for Adesanya. Imovov's a good striker, but he's also got the grappling in his back pocket as well. And if Imovov can get past Brendan Allen, that's a really good win. And I think the winner of Imovov and Allen, the, regardless, I think they should get an opportunity at Israel Adesanya because they're two guys in the middleweight division who, in any other division, they would have deserved the title shot. But because there's so many contenders in the middleweight division, I still think they're going to be one fight away. So let's give them one of the biggest names, if not the biggest name in the middleweight division, Israel Adesanya against Allen Imovov. It's a step down for Israel Adesanya, a chance for him to face somebody before he gets another title fight. And for Allen and Imovov, there's no way they're declining a fight with Israel Adesanya. Warm-up fight for Adesanya. Big step up for Alan and Imovov. The winner faces Adesanya. And I think if they can beat Adesanya, give them a title shot. You know, two fights and then they've got a title shot as well. Um, like I said, Adesanya's opportunity to get back in the title picture. Their opportunity to get back in the title picture. I think it's a really good fight for all three of them. So Adesanya versus the winner of Alan and Imovov, I think should be next. Kaio Bralo just fought against Kananir and got a really good win. Um, and he's looked great in the UFC as Kaio Bralo. That fighting nerd's gym seems to be taking over. And... Obviously, by Tuesday, he's going to be ranked number five in the division is Kaio Bralo. So for Kaio Bralo, I think next he should face the loser of Drickers to Blessis and Sean Strickland. There's too many contenders right now at the top, so I don't think we can necessarily give him a top contender um, right now. But I think he should face the loser of Drickers and Strickland. Assuming that they're going to be facing early 2025, give them the give him the loser in about April next year. I think that's a really fun fight because if it's Kaio Bralo versus Drickers to Blessis, if Drickers loses to Strickland and is no longer the champion, I don't think he deserves an immediate rematch, even though he has got a good resume. I think he should have to test himself against one of the best contenders in the division right now, Kaio Bralo. It's a massive, massive test for Bralo. Again, if he wins, he gets a title shot. And if Drikas can shut down Kaio Bralo, it's a big win for Drikas Duplessis and it bounces him straight back into the title picture, or at least straight back into a title shot. And if Strickland loses to Drikas, Strickland's definitely going to be away from the title picture for a while. But Strickland versus Kaio Bralo would be one of the most entertaining striking matchups in the middleweight division. Two guys that walk forward, two guys with a very effective boxing style. I think that will be one of the most interesting striking matchups you can make in the middleweight division. And the winner maybe gets... Well, if Strickland beats Kyle Barallo, he's probably going to need another win before he gets back in the title pitch. But if Barallo can beat Strickland, again, Barallo gets a title shot, so... Kaio Bralo versus the the loser of Drickers Duplessis and Sean Strickland. It's kind of crazy how quickly Barallo's career has gone because two fights ago, he wasn't even a ranked fighter. And now we're in talks of him facing Drickers and Strickland. But that's what I think should be next for Kaio Bralo. Paulo Costa, secret juice. Yeah, Paulo Costa needs to stay away from the title picture and he needs to stay away from the top end of the middleweight division. Because you look at his last couple of fights, he lost to Israel Adesanya, he lost to Marvin Vittori, he lost to Sean Strickland, and he's lost to Robert Whittaker. He's lost to all the top contenders, and he's shown that he's not good enough to be a top middleweight fighter. So for Paolo Costa, he needs to face someone who's in that middle area of the middleweight division. Not a top contender, not a complete bum, just someone in that middle area of the middleweight division. And that's why I think we should see Paolo Costa versus mid Jack Kamanson. I think this should be the next fight for Paolo Costa because he doesn't deserve a top fighter. And it's a good fight where we can kind of gauge how good Paolo Costa is in the division because Jack Kamanson is in a very similar position to Paolo Costa in the sense that he isn't really a top middleweight, but at the same time, he's done enough to get himself in the rankings. He's beaten Gastelum, he's beaten Curtis, he's beaten all the guys he needs to beat. He recently got a really good win with a Joe Piper as well. So he's had some good names on his resume, but he hasn't had a massive win. And for the big names that he has fought in guys like Sean Strickland, Delizze, Cannonier and Vittori, he's lost to all of those guys. So he's kind of like that mid-fighter in the middleweight division is Jack Kamanton. And I think he's the perfect 
guy to test Paolo Costa on, and Costa's in a very similar position. Costa's only wins are against old, washed fighters. In fact, Paolo Costa hasn't got a win against anybody who's still competing in the UFC. His only wins is Luke Rockall, Uriah Hall, Yo Romero, and Johnny Hendricks. None of those guys are in the UFC. They were all at the end of his career when Paolo Costa fought him, so I think Paolo Costa versus Jack Commander, we can kind of test how good Paolo Costa is, see his skills against another mid-middleweight, and from there we can maybe make decisions. Maybe the winner of this fight can get the loser of Alan and Imovov, because again, you know, it's another fight for them to step up, but yeah, Paolo Costa, let's see him against Jack Commander, who's coming off a win. I think this should be next in the middleweight division. Um, it's a clash of styles as well. A heavy, well, I say Jack Commands is a heavy grappler, but if anything, he strikes nowadays more than he grapples. Um, so I think it could be a fun fight. Costa, Hermanson, fight night main event. And I think that should be the next fight for Paolo Costa. Then we've got Marvin Vittori. Where has this dude been? Um, I think he was scheduled to face Imovov late last year, but he hasn't fought since he took that massive ass whooping by Jared Cannonier all the way in. I think it was June 2023. So he's been super inactive as, Jared, uh, as Marvin Vittori. So for Marvin Vittori, I think if he's going to come back, he should come back against somebody with a lot of hype. So for Marvin Vittori, I think he should face the winner of Anthony Hernandez and Michelle Pereira. Now, obviously, Hernandez and Pereira can't wait for this fight. They're going to be taking each other on a fight night main event later this year. Um, and without a doubt, they're two of the biggest prospects right now in the middleweight division. And whoever wins that fight is going to want a big step up in competition. And that's why I think they should, we should give the winner of that fight to Marvin Vittori because that, you know, if they can beat Marvin Vittori, that puts them straight into the title picture. If it's Hernandez versus Vittori, this is a really interesting fight for Hernandez, especially if he's able to get past someone as well-rounded as Michelle Pereira. It's a big grappling problem for Marvin Vittori because Anthony Hernandez seems to be one of the most crafty grapplers right now in the middleweight division. So it's a big, it's a dangerous fight for Marvin Vittori, first of all, and it's also a big chance and step up for Anthony Hernandez. And if Michelle Pereira wins, it's going to be so fun to see Michelle Pereira at the top of the middleweight division. It's just going to be so fun to see Michelle Pereira face these top middleweights. And I think him versus Vittori would be super fun. He's two well-rounded guys. He's biggest test in the UFC so far. Um, regardless of who wins that fight, I want to see them face Marvin Vittori. Because I feel like Vittori, he's kind of become a top five gatekeeper in the UFC. If you beat Marvin Vittori, welcome to the top five. If not... Have fun staying in the top 15 and just being another gatekeeper yourself. So I think the winner of Hernandez versus Pereira, give them a fight against Vittori. If they beat Vittori, then they can get in the top five. Um, but yeah, that's what I think should be next for Marvin Vittori and those guys. And then for Chris Curtis, he's in this weird position where he's kind of just about doing enough to stay in the middleweight rankings. He's ranked number 15th and he has been for a while. So for Chris Curtis, I think he should face Joe Pfeiffer. I think Chris Curtis versus Joe Pfeiffer should be next. Joe Pfeiffer, he's burst onto the seed in the UFC. He's finished every single one of his wins. And he is regarded by most as one of the most powerful middleweights in the world. He hits extremely hard. He's broken punching records. He's sending people to sleep. He hits like a truck. Now, he has actually fought a ranked opponent before in Jack Comanson, and he did fall short. And to be fair, Jack Comanson, the grappler, actually used his stand-up in that fight and was actually piecing up Joe Pfeiffer on the feet. So it wasn't a good look for Joe Pfeiffer. Uh, but I think he should face Chris Curtis. I I think this is a really really fun fight because you've got two guys who have dangerous boxing really powerful like i say great boxing as well i think this would be a super fun fight on the feet potential fight night main event as well but curtis joe pfeiffer two of the most salty guys in the division as well that you know two of the saltiest guys in the division two of the hardest hitting dudes in the division well curtis isn't one of the hardest hitting but still just a fun fight you can make on the feet in the middleweight division uh, and i think if joe pfeiffer can get past chris curtis he's finally earned his ranking spot at number 15th and from there he can start working his way up rather than just getting a a massive step up in competition so that is how i would match make the ufc middleweight division right now in the middleweight rankings into fights that like i said i think will be super fun fights and also fights that i think make the most sense let me know your thoughts on these matchups and if you agree or disagree and thank you for watching